This video gives three properties of the trig function sine and cosine that can be deduced from the unit circle definition. Recall that the unit circle definition of sine and cosine for an angle theta is that cosine theta is the x-coordinate and sine of theta is the y-coordinate for the point on the unit circle at angle theta. The first property is what I call the periodic property. This says that the values of cosine and sine are periodic with period 2 pi, and what that means is that if you take cosine of an angle plus 2 pi, you get the same thing as just if you took cosine of the angle. So when we write this down, we're assuming that theta is measured in radians. If we want to measure theta in degrees, the similar statement is that cosine of theta plus 360 degrees is equal to cosine of theta. We can make the same statements for sine. Sine of an angle plus 2 pi is equal to sine of the original angle, here the angle being measured in radians. If we want to measure the angle in degrees, the statement is that sine of theta plus 360 is equal to sine of theta. We can see why this is true from the unit circle definition of sine and cosine. If this is our angle theta, then theta plus 2 pi, the plus 2 pi adds a full turn around the unit circle to our angle, so we end up at the same place. Theta and theta plus 2 pi are just two different names for the same location on the unit circle. And since sine and cosine give you the y and x coordinates of that point on the unit circle, they have to have the same value. Similarly, if we consider an angle theta and an angle theta minus 2 pi, the minus 2 pi means we go the other direction around the unit circle, clockwise. We still end up in the same place, and therefore cosine of theta minus 2 pi, the x coordinate of that position, is the same thing as cosine of theta. Sine of theta minus 2 pi is the same thing as sine of theta. The same statements hold if we add or subtract multiples of 2 pi. For example, cosine of theta plus 4 pi is still the same thing as cosine of theta. This time we've just gone two turns around the unit circle and still gotten back to the same place. So if we want to find cosine of 5 pi, that's the same thing as cosine of pi plus 4 pi, which is the same thing as cosine of pi. Thinking about the unit circle, pi is halfway around the unit circle, so cosine of pi means the x-coordinate of this point right here. Well, that point has coordinates negative 1, 0, so cosine of pi must be negative 1. If I want to take sine of negative 420 degrees, well, that's sine of negative 360 degrees minus 60 degrees, which is the same thing as sine of minus 60 degrees. Thinking about the unit circle, minus 60 degrees means I start at the positive x-axis and go clockwise by 60 degrees. That lands me about right here, and so that's one of the special angles that has an x-coordinate of 1 half, a y-coordinate of negative root 3 over 2, and therefore sine of negative 60 is negative root 3 over 2, the y-coordinate. The next property I call the even-odd property. It says that cosine is an even function, which means that cosine of negative theta is the same thing as cosine of theta. While sine is an odd function, which means that sine of negative theta is the negative of sine of theta. To see why this is true, let's look at an angle theta and the angle negative theta. A negative angle means you go in the clockwise instead of counterclockwise direction from the positive x-axis. The coordinates of this point, by definition, are cosine theta, sine theta, whereas the coordinates of this point are cosine negative theta, sine of negative theta. But by symmetry, 
these two points have the exact same x-coordinate, and therefore cosine of theta must equal cosine of negative theta, while their y-coordinates have the same magnitude but opposite signs. This one's positive and this one's negative. Therefore, sine of negative theta is the negative of sine of theta. Let's figure out if tan of theta is an even or odd function. Well, we know that tan of negative theta, tangent by definition, is sine over cosine. Well, we know that sine of negative theta is the negative of sine of theta, whereas cosine of negative theta is cosine of theta. Therefore, we're getting negative sine theta over cosine theta, which is negative tan of theta. Since tan of negative theta is the negative of tan of theta, tan theta is an odd function. The last property on this video is the Pythagorean property, which says that cosine of theta squared plus sine of theta squared is equal to 1. A lot of times this property is written with the shorthand notation cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. But this notation cosine squared theta just means you take cosine of theta and square it. This property is called the Pythagorean property because it comes from the, the Pythagorean theorem. Let me draw a right triangle on the unit circle. I'll call this angle theta, so the coordinates of this endpoint here are cosine theta, sine theta. Since this is supposed to be a unit circle, the hypotenuse of my right triangle has length 1. The base of my right triangle is just cosine theta, same thing as the x-coordinate of this point. And the height of my triangle is the y-coordinate of the point, sine theta. Now the Pythagorean theorem says that this side length squared plus that side length squared equals 1 squared. Since 1 squared is the same thing as 1, that gives me the Pythagorean property. The Pythagorean property is handy for computing values of cosine given values of sine and vice versa. In this problem, we're told that sine of t is negative 2 sevenths and t is an angle that lies in quadrant 3. When we say the angle lies in quadrant 3, that means the terminal side of the angle lies here in quadrant 3. One way to find cosine of t is to use the fact that cosine squared t plus sine squared t is equal to 1. That is cosine of t squared plus negative 2 seventh squared is equal to 1. I can write this as cosine of t squared plus 4 40 ninths is equal to 1, and so cosine of t squared is equal to 1 minus 4 40 ninths, which is 45 40 ninths. Taking the square root of both sides, that gives me that cosine t is plus or minus the square root of 45 over 49. That's plus or minus the square root of 45 over 7. Now since we're in the third quadrant, we know that cosine of t, which represents the x-coordinate of this point, must also be negative. Therefore, cosine of t is going to be negative square root of 45 over 7. It's also possible to solve this problem using the Pythagorean theorem for right triangles directly. If we look at the fact that sine of t is negative 2 sevenths and ignore the negative sign for now, we can think of this information as telling us that we have a right triangle, the angle theta, whose opposite side is 2 and whose hypotenuse is 7. If we call this side here a, then Pythagorean theorem tells us a squared plus 2 squared is 7 squared, so a squared plus 4 is 49, so a squared is 45, and a is plus or minus the square root of 45. Since I'm worrying about a triangle, I'm going to use the positive value. Now, cosine of t is going to be adjacent 
over hypotenuse. So that's going to be the square root of 45 over 7. Now I go back to thinking about possum and negative signs, and I notice that since I'm in the third quadrant, my cosine needs to be negative, so I just stick a negative sign in front. This alternative solution uses many of the same ideas as the previous solution and ultimately gets us the same answer. This video gives three properties of trig functions. The periodic property, the even-odd property, and the Pythagorean property.